and we're back. Um, we seem to freeze a little bit then, just loading up, so don't worry. So we read the automata, um, and we read some others as well. I think this might be a good one. It was written only yesterday, in fact. So, yeah. So, Visiting Friends by Clache, Classe, Clache, I'm not sure. They say everything comes to an end. Here in the sand, their first colony, Helena. The settlers of Byron's world formed their settlement far below ground initially because the light of the sun was multiplied by the planet's atmosphere. They brought things from Earth that reflected their values. They were a people who wrote, but never drew illustrations. This is all that is left of the first settlement of Byron's world. Their biggest mistake? Going to the surface. Moving closer to the surface, they started anew. A new society with visual art and a dedication to paintings. I'm just gonna do that real quick so we don't don't get any copyrights. Uh, a new society with visual arts and a dedication to paintings. The wall decorations and lush colours reflect this new generation. If you listen closely here, you can can hear the brush strokes. They say it's a unique form of recording. The third settlement began as a dome, built to oppose the unprotected second settlement on the surface. That opposition more evident here, where more elaborate shielding structures known as buildings were constructed. But everything comes to an end. They locked themselves in. The fourth settlement must have persisted for ages before they found the buried third settlement. The snowman was a stark contrast to the reclusive nature of settlements past. With the dark sun in the distance, it heralded a new era. But everything must come to an end? A device used for interplanetary end arrivals. When activated, it would open a canal for travellers to walk here. Finally, at the end of it all, they were invited by their many friends and set out to visit them across planets and solar systems and galaxies. That was quite nice. Um, yeah, we'll give a commendation. We'll, we'll commend the author. But that was really nice. Um, I found the story flowed. Uh, although at the end, it kind of took an abrupt turn because everyone was fighting and then suddenly... Their friends invited them to leave the planet, so. Uh, sure, let's, let's read The Slow Freeze by A.J. Gemini. Ten times we went back into the library here, hoping there would be something new. Nine times we opened and shut doors just to hear them rattle. Eight times the weather was too bad to go outside. All the rain was ash. We stayed in and dreamed of relief. For the seventh time, we managed to see the sky through the clouds, and we explored. Six times, we looked through the empty grand hallways for some kind of clue. Five times, we knocked to the doors of these cryo chambers. Shapes in sight did not move. Four times, the humming from the equipment here lulled us into a half-sleep state. Though the third time, we woke up to discover it was cold. Two times we blinked and felt uncertain we were even really awake. And finally we realised we were not. We heard the sound of someone rattling on our doors. Ooh, that was a nice, interesting take on this place. Because it's basically saying they were the ones in the cryo chambers all along. Oh, I really, really like that. I really liked that. That was pretty good. Short, but good. Uh, let's let's go to a different planet, I think. Let's go this way. Let's go back 
into this planet. Um, let's have a look at the popular again. So we've read a couple from here already, but we, we seem to it seems to take a little while to load up the populars. Bear with. Okay. So we read E. This is for you before. Um, did we read Mother Torso? What's that? Here's my one. Ah, oh, someone commended my work. That's quite nice. And it's in. It's not in the top um, ten, but we're eleventh, which is pretty good. Uh, okay, so. Wake a string like this. See if it will load. I don't think it will, I'm afraid. Well, I think we'll just read it anyway. Why not? Who knows what we're gonna find? If it will like to load. No. There we go. Awake, estranged, written by, I'll just call him Jed. <laughs> Jed number nine. I am weak, but they have maintained strength throughout the ages. How long must this burden remain? The ground is a reminder of my existence, for the air is the promise of possibility. The hills are vast expressions of loneliness, and they consume the grass as if searching. This world is a complex system of interlocking organisms. They work together, and I am an intruder, unseen among them. These rocks have been suspended for centuries, beneath clouds with the promise of acceptance. My mind is alive with the ghosts of all these alien artifacts. I can see clearly a hurrying plan set before me. Their world is asleep, dreaming like some unconscious amputee crying out with phantom pains of some long removed limb, and I am its last nerve of true feeling. The mountains sit in judgment of half truths, and the stones never carved lie dormant awaiting the attention of their masters. To break their physical promise means I fix the anguish with which they live. So while my heart weighs heavy with this burden, theirs are the dreams which must remain unfilled. This world is an unloving mother, and I am its child, cast out into the darkness. Oh my god, that was really nice as well. Oh, so many good stories this time. Whew. Well, we are reading the popular, so... <laughs> We are going to find the good ones. I will commend Jed number nine on this because it was very nice. Um, look how many commendations that's got. Let's have let's have a read of punishment. So it's by Creepy Pine Punishment. I am not coming home. I am not able to tell you why. Soft grass, low gravity, and light rain. I had stepped through space right into the edge of the mind. A monument for the trials. I thought of Earth and all the things I've gone through. All the challenges I've conquered. All the lies I've taken. I wasn't too far when I nearly tripped on a long, almost endless string of thought leading down. How could I resist? You know I would arrive here eventually. It's what I feared the most. What I had to face. You're always the one I could trust, the one who knew me best. So I'm sure you realised the implications faster than I did. Everything was over before I realised. But just as broken down, barren and ruined as this place was, there was a sign of hope. Of change. Cuts in the horizon, like cuts made through the flesh by cold steel. My memory haunts me, still. Grand monuments gave way to an uncontrollable urge of destruction. 
She wasn't in the plan. But now she paid. Just like all the other innocents. And then I found you. The only one who stopped me. But woe is me, for it was too late. I travelled God knows how far just to find peace. I'm hopeless. I know that now. I can only carry the blame and shame with me for the rest of time. Ooh, so this story seems to be about um, maybe a, an assassin or a ruthless killer. Or even a mercenary who's gone around and had to kill people a number of times. Or even a, a soldier. A soldier who's been... F ordered, ordered in fact, to kill people for the sake of one person. Um, when they came to this planet, they finally realised that enough was enough. They didn't want to kill anymore. But of course, killing one, or saving one, does not make up for the fact that this person may have killed tens, hundreds, even another person. It doesn't make up for it. I guess the punishment title means that they're being punished mentally and emotionally because they're finally realizing their mistake of all time. Like that their greatest mistake was to kill all those other people and destroy all that hope, I think is what the author is trying to say. Creepy, that was a very nice book. Um, well, story, short story. You'll get a commendation for that. Increase his to like 469. <laughs> um, I think we're going to head to the final world now. We're going to come over there. I'd really like it if they uh, made more worlds. Um, let's have a read of the populace. Uh, um, humanity. We'll have a read of humanity, why not? So this was written by Joseph Bones. 50,000 years ago, this was home to human. I assume that means humanity. Um, they covered their planet with machines and debris and created chaos. Other worlds are already messed up and visitors are very unwelcome here. For a millennia, their stupidity was unmatched. Towering buildings are crumbling completely like their civilization did. The heart of their knowledge was th the use of sunlight. Children sang of this. Elders completely used their civil uh, elders completely used civilization as their puppet. But like anything that rises, after a thousand years it deeply falls, deeper than from whence it came. That there was a fall. The same people who colonized this world before them had exactly the same fight, uh, fate. But nature never stayed far behind. An echo of thousands an echo thousands of years later they built primitive housing. Of all the lessons they could have learned, they learned nothing at all, in total awe of their knowledge, like if they were gods. They were everything but gods. And in the end, despite unrespectful stupidity, their legacy was encrusted in this land forever. Um I'll give a commendation, but I will complain about the grammar and the sentence structure and the flowing words that there was a vast lack of. Um, something for you to work on, Joseph Bones. Anyway, I think that's gonna... Actually, we may have time for one more. But yeah, let's do one more from here. Let's see if we can find another... Find a, a lovely one.
interesting progress. The Hive Monolith by Zombie Clow. 50,000 years ago, this was home to a glorious race of mechanical beings who, be who built towers to stars but did not stop there. They covered their planet with machines and created, in the end, nothing but their own destruction. Other worlds came having learned of the beauty of creations, and visitors came from all over the galaxy to marvel at their mighty mechanical brethren. For millennia, their mechanical technology was unmatched. Towering buildings reached beyond the skies and deep into the planet. The heart of their mechanical hive mind was the Togar, a once great ruler of the universe and an intergalactic monolith of untold power and wisdom. Children sang of this, elders wrote many stories. These were compiled into tomes and the tomes into great libraries and the great libraries into Ark sent out to all corners of the known and unknown universe. In dark corners and prior rooms, however, some began to doubt Togarth's word, began to doubt his unrelentless expansion below the planet and to the stars. They began to worry to what doom the monolith would bring their way. But like anything that expanded with such speed and vastness, after thousands of years the empire that had been built began to bulge and tear at its edges. There was a fall. The same people who once followed blindly every order now fall against their leader. Civil war broke out and the empire crumbled into disarray. Every side escalated with every move building larger and larger war machines, creating larger and larger tears in space. This attracted the attention of some much larger, more powerful and more evil being than this universe knew. But nature never being in never a being for such evil to exist in the universe, and upon its arrival the planet started to crumble, and was rained down upon by fire. The planets nearby and the moons in orbit burnt, the inhabitants writhed in a singular pain. An echo thousands of years later, they built great monuments to warn of the dangers, hoping none would unleash the being again. Of all the lessons they could have learned, but they did not uh, of all the lessons they could have learned, but did not, was that the one that just started this, the Hive Monolith, was created by the evil being. It was a mechanical herald to the evil, to prepare universes for the pain that was to come. And in the end, despite the pain that had become them, despite the doom that, be that befell them all, their legacy was a cautionary tale of technology and evil. Oh, I like that one. I like that a lot. That was really interesting. Speaks of other beings and things like that, which was quite nice. So, yeah, I think that's going to end it there for this episode. Uh, I will apologise that the that the episode is in two parts. There was a small glitch with the recording, so I had to fix that. Um, but yeah, this was story time. If you liked and enjoyed, don't forget to subscribe for more and press the like button below. And in the comments, just tell me what you thought. It really helps. Anyway, see you next time, guys. Ta-ta for now.